starting and making information regarding these uh, lectures. The name of these uh, lectures of this course is Power Device and Circuits. We are in a master's degree, electronic curriculum. My name is uh, Ettore Napoli, and I will be your professor for this semester. First of all, contacts. Ways to contact me, ways that I used to contact you. From myself to the students, I usually use emails uh, or I use the website Docenti. You have to enroll to the course lectures on docentiunina.it. When you enroll, please select yes for the emails. For the moment, there is only one person that enrolled and uh, very clever, selected no, which is the point of being enrolled if you don't, don't, don't want to have any information. Okay, maybe you want to belong to a list, but no one has to contact you. In general, I send uh, emails uh, regarding a missing lecture, regarding uh, we will meet here or in the lab, regarding the availability of uh, these lectures. I will present many, many slides. These slides are available on the website, but not all of them uh, uh, right now. I will prepare them uh, during the, the lectures. And for the moment, you only have these, uh, these uh, initial lectures and the following one. Uh, please download only those from uh, 2014. There are the old ones. More or less, they will be the same, more or less, but the newest one will be much, uh, there, there will be new, uh, new, new, new contents, uh, bug correction and so on. Uh, supervision uh, will be Wednesday, uh, 14.30, 16.30. Uh, let's say during this semester. In general, I should be there. I have lectures in the morning, here, in the afternoon, I should be there. In general, an email is better. I, in this way, you are sure that I'm there and that I can speak with you. Uh, you can also use emails, but just for very short questions or appointments requests. I cannot give a few full explanations through email. It will be, it should be, uh, be too, too long. My office is here, the electronic department, second floor. Let's say there. Room number seven. This is the um, office number. The topic of these lectures, power device and circuits, we will talk about power electronics. You studied many, many system, systems till now. In most of them, this is the information and communication technology topic, we are working on this. You study the flow of the information. Digital circuits are many, many times regarding the information that you transfer and manipulate during, in, in your electronic circuit. So you have an input interface that will, be, that, that will collect the signal, the information, uh, some kind of signal conditioning that will modify this, uh, this information to modify the voltage, the, 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 the current, to transfer the, 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 the domain. In some way, you need to make this signal more useful for the rest, that is signal processing, more or less. Filtering, uh, uh, computation, and so on. After this, you have an output stage, an output interface, and finally, one load. In this section, you, for the moment, you only thought about the transfer of the information, I don't know how many of you studied the, my previous lectures on digital electronics on FPGA. And the topic connecting to the outside of the FPGA was uh, how I can transfer one bit or one or more bit at very fast, uh, reliably. But I mean uh, without modifying the information. It's not a problem of power. It's just the information. In general, when I, when I want to transfer some information, if I don't have signal-to-noise ratio problems, if the noise is not very high, 
the best thing that I can do is uh, transfer very low amount of power. This will save power. If I can speak with a very low voice, I do this. The only problem is if you can, if, if you can understand me or not. In this uh, system, there is something that is not highlighted, but that is very important. It is the power. Everything in uh, physics, in nature, to actuate something, I need power, energy. We now pay attention to the way of changing, controlling, conditioning the power coming from the external supply that are symbolized by these uh, horizontal lines and the transfer of energy to the system. The input, input interface needs, needs to have some energy, some power, to bring some power to transfer the signal here. This will be larger. The signal conditioning also. Signal processing will need some power, probably from the same power supply. And finally, the output stages will need a lot of power to drive a conventional and a convenient and useful load. What is important here is that uh, the power flow is everywhere. The power flow is complex. It varies in size. There are uh, systems that need very little power, but, but maybe they need a very uh, stabilized power, a controlled power, and other sections that, in the, that need a lot of power. There will be more power supply and with more points, many points, that will drain energy from the power supply. This means that in a complex systems, in, together with these blocks, you have uh, at least a similar amount of circuits that need to provide power to these circuits. <coughs> the key aspect for these systems is the efficiency is no more the transfer of information. Reliability is also very important. You want them to work. You want them to be on all the time. You don't, talk. You don't want to have uh, supply problems. But the point, the performance parameter, the main performance parameter is the efficiency. You, you don't want to waste power. If I focus on an electronic system, a power <coughs> electronic system, the schematic block can be something like this. There will be a power supply. This uh, power will be taken. There will be some kind of filtering to stabilize it. Then a power circuit that will uh, modify this power will change the voltage, will, change, will decide the amount of current to be taken from here. In output filtering to stabilize again or provide just the correct components to the load and finally the load. There will be a certain part of signal processing here and it will be here. There will be some circuit that uh, will take in conformation from the external uh, world and from the circuit, will process them and will decide how these power circuits needs to behave. If I feel that we need more power, maybe this will increase this voltage or will increase the current. If we see and feel that there is some dangerous situation on the output, I can switch off this power circuit. So there will be some kind of signal processing that will be there. The power circuit will provide the controlled power, current voltage that will change with time, that will be needed to drive the load. The loads can be very, very different. This is, different. This is also another important point. We can have motors, actuators, ovens, lamps, electronic systems, supply, displays, output antennas, spark plugs, pumps, and so on. These are, all these loads 
will need power and the amount of power will be very, very different. Will, will change by orders of magnitude from milliwatts to hundreds of kilowatts. And also the voltage will change. There will be many applications. <coughs> the signal processing actually will uh, work feeling the external world. And this will be done usually with the feed forward, <coughs> measuring the power supply. If there is a change in the input, the signal processing will try to prevent the variation from year to year, uh, feeding the drivers in a certain way. For example, the input voltage will decrease. This, this is a battery. The battery is discharging. The voltage decreases. The signal processing, the feedback, in this case, is a feed forward feels the reduction of this voltage and increases the amount of amplification, let's say, uh, obtained from this side. On the other hand, the signal processing can feedback the output, measure, for example, the current or the voltage here, and try to stabilize this value, or can sense a very high current. In this case, there can be a short circuit, and then switch off everything to avoid the failure and problems. Uh, the feedback adapts the power circuit to the change in supply of power and to the change in needs of the load. And as previously said, it also has a relevant role in guaranteeing the, the reliability of the system uh, when, and in the case, the involved power levels can lead to dangerous situations most important applications. There is power electronics everywhere. This is, in terms of money and of market, a very important field. People, portable electronics, tablet, notebook, smartphone clocks, health monitoring, this is very important nowadays, personal communications. There are a lot of systems that people use that are on, on them. And they need power supply. There is a power supply here. There are many power supply here. There is a power supply here. That one is not on myself, but also needs a power supply. Buildings, heating, air conditioning, fan, refrigeration, lighting, cooking, domotics. This is not very common, but will, it will be in the future. Computers, uh, uninterruptible power supplies, elevator, security, and so on. The power here is increasing. This is a few watts, no more than that. Here you start to be 100, 1 kilowatt. This is the power. It can be 10 kilowatts if you are, we are talking about, the, for example, the heating or air conditioning, conditioning of a big building. <coughs> Industry. Here the power is even higher. Sometimes you need dedicated power uh, generation systems for these big, big industries. Electric motors, pumps, arc and induction furnace, uh, welding, lasers, transport, robot, belt conveyors. These are systems that require a lot of power. And also in this case, you need power electronics to provide this uh, controlled power. Automotive and railways, traction, battery chargers, drive control, safety, very important communications. Aerospace and the, the power increases even more up to the power distribution and the generation. Here the power is at its maximum. This is the, these are the systems that provide power to an entire town, uh, uh, village or country. As you see, many applications. How can we try to classify these applications. <coughs> As we know, power is voltage multiplied by current. And uh, this means that we can, we, we could classify them in terms of power, just the, the, the product of the two terms. But this is not the case, since in many, many cases, the voltage, for example, or the current are fixed. You cannot change them. You cannot trade off voltage with current. For example, this one will need probably something like 10 volts of power supply and maybe 2 amps. 
I cannot decide to double the voltage to reduce the, the current. It's not possible. The transistors need that voltage, supply voltage. This means that a, a typical system graph to classify the power electronics applications can be seen like this. We have the current, maximum current, and we have the power. Obviously, uh, a 45 degrees uh, line here is a constant power line. And uh, please note that these are log-log scale plots. This is because the power varies of many, many orders of magnitude. And on a linear scale, we wouldn't see anything. And as you can see, you can see uh, systems with very small voltage power supply, low power supplies, low voltage power supplies that can also have very high current. Uh, there are applications in which the current is small but the voltage displays, the voltage must be high. Telecommunication lamp ballast, the, the voltage is around 1000 volts and the current is not that high. Automation motor control in this direction we are increasing both voltage and current up to drives and DC high voltage uh, links that are those uh, that transfer the power from the system, generation system to the to the count to the towns, for example. Uh, these graphs are just an example, obviously. Uh, this box will change with time. If there is a new technology for displays, maybe the maximum power, maximum voltage will be reduced. We need more current. All, both of them will be reduced. It's just to show you that in order to classify power electronics application, the first parameter is voltage. The second parameter is current. Other ways to classify power electronics applications. The operating frequency. This is uh, less obvious. In modern applications, the power uh, devices that are very important for the efficiency and for the function and functionality of the system are actually switched on and off to operate the power system. As a consequence, one uh, parameter to classify the power electronics application is the fre switching frequency of the power devices. Usually, it must be said that higher switching frequency means better performances. We tend to increase the switching frequency. <coughs> There is a limitation, however. They usually come from the device ratings and the switching time, switching time of the devices. Maybe they are not able to switch on and off very fast. There can be very slow devices or very fast devices. It depends. Actually, the characteristics of the power devices must be chosen accordingly to the voltage and current rating of the application. I need to see which is, this is the voltage, this is the current, which is the fastest uh, device that I can choose that can sustain this voltage and can handle this current. In general, I try to go as fast as possible. This means that the power devices are present in many, many different types. They are classified in terms of voltage, current, switching frequency, and for every application that we have seen before, there are hundreds of them, there may be, there is a particular power device that is optimum for that application. The relation between switching frequency and the power ratings, however, um, is not completely decoupled. As, uh, as uh, it is normal in uh, real applications, smaller devices that will handle smaller current and smaller voltages will be faster. It's more or less like an engine. 
big engines will rotate slow, small engines will rotate much faster. This is a general physic, uh, rule of uh, physics rule. <coughs> In this graph, the power load is uh, presented as a function of the operating frequency. These are more or less the same application that we have seen a couple of slides before. As previously said, the, the operating frequency increases when the handle power gets smaller, and this is due to the limitations intrinsic in high power devices that tend to switch slowly if they are if the power is high. And as you can see, also in this case, we have a log scale plot. We have a high power system that switch below 1 kilohertz, 100 of hertz. These are the numbers. We, we need to be confident with the numbers. This is the, one of the most important points for an engineer. You need to understand which is the rule of thumb, the number that we are dealing with. For very high power below 1 kilohertz, in general for middle range power supply in the order of 1 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, 50 kilohertz, these are the numbers. Increasing power you can, uh, reducing the power you can have, for example, high amplifier, you can go up to 100 kilohertz, and uh, up to maybe microwave ovens or telecommunications that can, can switch very fast, than, but there. For example, in the tele in telecommunication radio frequency application, the, the power is uh, one watt, less than one watt, and then you can switch very fast. But this is something we, we will not uh, study about. We will focus more or less on this range. This is another very famous graph that will present uh, the volt multiplied by hands <coughs> capabilities, that is the power of various applications, and this is uh, on the other end of the operation, the operational frequency. But this graph will tell you something more. Will tell you more or less in which area you can use a particular kind of device. The the devices that are listed here are bipolar transistors, power MOSFET, IGBT, Tyristor or SCR, and GTO. These uh, acronyms, these names are not uh, familiar to you, not yet. We will study them during these lectures <coughs> and uh, we will see the particular characteristics in the future. However, as you can see, for example here, high switching frequency application with low power are usually oriented and use discrete MOSFETs, power MOSFETs. On the other hand, low switching frequency, very high power application, high voltage DC link, will use thyristors. In the middle, high power, uh, I can switch in frequency, lower power than here, we can use GTO, gate and off thyristor. These are transistor modules, reducing the power and increasing the switching frequency, as you can see we go here. These middle, uh, medium power applications, 10 kilohertz, up to 10 kilovolt amperes. Uh, we have um, MOSFET, IGBTs, and these are the various applications. Obviously, we have uh, the current product range and the future product range. This is uh, what probably will happen, and uh, these graphs, to be honest, will depend heavily on uh, people that will tell you about. If they sell MOSFET, we'll uh, tend to say that MOSFET will be important, uh, and uh, if they sell GTO, we'll say that GTO will be important. These power devices that we have listed can be, first of all, classified in two, into two 
categories unipolar or bipolar the bipolar transistors are, are obviously bipolar these are obsolescent more or less are no, no more used or tend to be used always less they are very cheap on the other hand so it may be that very low cost applications that can still use bipolar transistors on the other hand, we have the power MOSFETs that are unipolar devices and are very fast just for this motivation. And on the other hand, for various ratings for power, we have bipolar devices that are IGBT, Tristor, and GTU. <coughs> Some uh, short digression because I use terms that maybe you have not have before, and this can be misleading for you. What is a package? what is a power module, what is a discrete device. Uh, what a power module is, uh, in this course, in these lectures, uh, we, so we'll tell, we will say that a power module is a package that contains more than a single power device. It's a kind of a pre-built circuit in a single package. And it will contain from 2 to 10 power devices. This is one example. This is uh, an IGBT module that will contain probably six IGBTs <coughs> and six antiparallel lights. This is the size. As you can see, this is a pencil. This device is more or less like this. Something very big and quite heavy. This is for traction uh, railways applications. Obviously, there won't, there won't be nothing like that uh, in, 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 in a computer. On the other hand, when I say discrete device, I mean a package that contains one single device. These are the devices. These are more, more or less like this. This is a trench stop. This is an Optimus. This is surface mount. This is through hole. These are more common when you want to build circuits. You use a discrete power device. Couple, three, four of them. Another important point power circuits use a very limited number of power devices. <coughs> uh, maybe you are used to digital circuits where the number of transistors is easily in the range of thousands, millions. This is not the case. A power device, a power circuit use one, two, three, four, six power devices, no more than that. On the other hand, when I say power system on chip or system on chip that uh, handles power, I mean a VLSI system that also includes power devices. For example, this is uh, a VLSI chip, the size of it is less than one centimeter square. And uh, the big, uh, okay, this is not power model, the big uh, section here that are uh, uniform color are power MOSFETs. There are, probably here there are 12 power MOSFETs and are con these are controlled by this uh, digital section. When you, when you talk about power, you talk about all this range of applications. There is an, enti an entire world. We will try to explain as much as possible. But when you start working on this, you have an entire section an entire uh, set of problems that are completely different from an entire set of problems that we have if you want to design one of these. And if you want to use this one, it's completely different uh, than if you want to use that one. The problems are different. That is very high power, very high current. This may be more uh, connected to the stability of the power source or uh, the integration. Industrial, industries and commercial value. 
As you understood, probably we are talking about thousands of, of applications. This means thousands of different circuits and thousands of different commercialized devices. There is not one single device that will be sold for every application. There are thousands, hundreds, thousands of devi different devices for the different applications. Power electronics is present everywhere. There are many power electronic circuits in every electronic system. This means that if you sell power electronic systems or devices, you sell them in millions of units. It's not 1,000, 2,000. It's millions per month. <coughs> this means that there is a margin for a huge number of companies that are involved in this. Uh, most companies, especially those that sell uh, power devices, are uh, international companies with country-level revenue. There are many more small companies that, on the other end, small or medium companies, that usually design for niche applications, maybe not with such huge margins, but will cover niche applications that need particular devices or systems. On the other hand, device companies are smaller in number. Device companies tend to be, you need a, a good technology to design the device. You need to work with silicon, you need the silicon fab. ST Magnetronics is one of them, for example. This is the size. In this case, you have a smaller number of uh, companies that, however, are very big. Much larger is the number of companies that use the power devices and design power electronics. This is the, an overview of the topics, power electronics and power devices. As you see, very big, very large topic. We cannot cover all of it in one semester, obviously. What we are uh, uh, going to present? We will uh, discuss the main circuits that, will that can be used for power conversion and power, conversion and power management. These are more or less classic circuits and the small variants of them are useful almost everywhere. We will focus on the circuit, obviously, the topology of the circuit, but with the emphasis on the effect and use of the power devices that are in the power circuits. Uh, we will try to stress the strong interaction between the efficiency, reliability, and the design of the power circuits and the choice and the activation of the devices, the power devices. Well, then we will present the different power devices available, commercially available, available nowadays, working principle. Uh, we will discuss about uh, behavior, limits of operation, safe operating area, static and dynamic performances. More in detail, we will discuss about power amplifiers, class A, B and D, and here we will focus on power conversion efficiency and all power dissipation and power dissipation. Then we will discuss about AC-DC converters, rectifiers, half and full bridge rectifier, bridge rectifier, diode ratings, capacitance and inductance filtering. Then we will uh, focus on DC-DC converters, step down, step up, bridge, in the ideal circuit scan. Can you please close the door? The ideal circuit schematic, principle of operation, input to output for transfer function, filter, ripple, circuit implementation with power devices, efficiency, and uh, as a function of load, current, and operating frequency, and driving circuits. We will also discuss about uh, isolated DC DC converters, fly back and forward, with more or less the same. Uh, focus that we had on, on the CDC converters and we, also, we will also focus on number circuits. 
working, working principles, circuits, design, efficiency, and so on. DC and C converters, inverters will, will also be discussed. And devices is the second part of the, these lectures. Uh, static power losses, thermal characterization, thermal resistance, <coughs> thermal impedance, device packages, switching power losses. The devices that we will study are the power pin dial, rectum voltage, junction termination, IV curve, generation recombination lifetime, dynamic behavior, fast recovery dials, the power bipolar transistors, with more or less the same, with all the possible and uh, characteristic effects. The GTO and uh, SCR, the power MOS, the IGBT is another device that we will discuss. And uh, we will finish with new materials for power devices. Most of the materials that we use nowadays are silicon. These power devices are made in silicon, like the digital circuits, but there are new materials that can be probably more efficient. We will discuss about superjunction design technique. And a part of this lecture will be spent in the lab. When there will be lab work uh, where we will use uh, the well-known SPICE simulator. In this case, we use LT SPICE, but every SPICE simulator is the same. LT SPICE 4 that you can download for free at www.linear.com. And uh, we will focus on power circuit simulation and analysis using SPICE. We will hopefully finish. This year we have to finish. It seems that we can finish also in January. Let's see where will it, where will it arrive.